After dating for more than a year now and not even getting to first base, two of the world's least attractive car makers have finally tied the knot. They're on honeymoon now, as a matter of fact. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously, or you can just click the card that's on screen now. Whatever works for you, dude. A year ago now, maybe slightly longer, Fiat Chrysler was enthusiastically looking for a mate and found itself on the dance floor of the local sleazy nightclub, slapped ignominiously in the face after prematurely and ill-advisedly slipping its hand down over Renault-Nissan's ass. This, frankly, did not go as planned, that unrequited automotive love. Such a terrible thing. And Dude, we've all been there. Undeterred, of course, our Italiano American hero looked around the nightclub and spotted an even less attractive prospective mate sitting all alone in the corner. PSA group. Prospective hookups just don't get much less aesthetically pleasing than this, I'd suggest. So PSA Group was just right. What a soft target. The Neville no-mates of unhitched car makers. <laughs> this could work, Fiat Chrysler opined, to anyone who'd care to listen nearby. We're obviously on a particular road to consumer hell here, paved by a kind of interesting american italiano franco Three-way. It's like a deleted scene from the worst David Attenborough documentary ever, The Secret Life of Car Makers. Chapter 12, Desperately Mating. The merger is clearly an automotive abomination of highly enriched poop emojis, which are all oddly similar in the sense of the big picture, clearly, but subtly different in nuanced ways when you're down here in the sewer taking a closer look. There was, however, just one small problem during the least attractive courtship of modern automotive history. Fiat, Chrysler, Jeep, Alfa Romeo, Peugeot, Citroën, Vauxhall, Opel didn't exactly roll off the old tonsil tickler. And thus, a shiny new holy bullshit name needed to be hastily concocted. And that was the best they could do. Stellantis. Yes. This video proudly not sponsored by Stellantis. In 2019, 4.3 million people were exposed to FCA. For many, it's a living hell. If you're sick of waking up with Fiat Chrysler, talk to your doctor about Stellantis today. The name Stellantis is possibly not derived from two works of fiction. Interstellar, a film about the self-destruction of the human race, and Atlantis, the fabled city that sunk into the ocean one afternoon during a rerun of I Love Lucy. A highly placed source inside Stellantis probably never said. Stellantis captures perfectly the essence of self-destruction, which is core to the DNA across all our proud Stellantis brands, as well as the concept we call aspirational hopelessness of boldly doing too little too late before sinking forever without a trace. Which is, of course, what happens to the will to live for many of our valued customers often before they get to the very first service. Amen, brother, and a women, obviously. To quote the recent immortal words of US Democratic Congressman, former mayor of Canvas City, Canvas City and Kansas City, but perhaps they had a big wind, I don't know, and United Methodist Minister, Emmanuel Cleaver. Every time I think we're at peak wank, something like this happens. Humanity, you know, always pushing that envelope. <laughs> like, I thought we were at the summit with Access Chamber a few months back. You probably remember that. But clearly not. So, 
What next for us, I wonder? Stellantis is a complex and multifaceted proposition, obviously. Kind of like Thanos, the Daleks and the Klingons joining the Galactic Empire for maximum evil. Like, yeah, okay, synergies, I get it, like, yeah, gestalt theory. But dude, how exactly is this going to work? Like, ultimately, it just confuses the shit out of people and you're left wondering which network executive actually thought that this was a good idea. Closer to home, of course, in the domain, perhaps, of Schittsvillian politics, Stellantis would be like Jackie Lambie and Pauline Hanson forming a coalition government with Clive Palmer, which is sort of hilarious, except when you consider the unlikely political things that have actually happened over recent years. So, discretion, possibly the better part of valour there. Amazingly, however, after the $52 billion Stellantis deal... Stellantis is going to be the fourth biggest car maker on Earth, upending General Motors. Positions one to three, in case you're interested, are the monoliths of Toyota, Volkswagen and Hyundai, respectively. Stellantis shares will be traded in Milan, Paris and New York. Trading in New York kicked off on Tuesday after Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares and Chairman John Elkan ceremoniously rang the New York Stock Exchange's opening bell... Another brick elevating humanity's peak wank wall to an incrementally new high. Just perfect. Stellantis combines the rugged free spirit of America embodied in Chrysler, seven slot shit heap Jeep and brands of that nature, with the renowned engineering prowess of Fiat, the unrivaled reliability of Alfa Romeo, and it adds a splash of French flamboyance plus industry-leading levels of accelerated obsolescence typically associated with the Peugeot, Citroën and DS trifecta. And finally, it throws in for wild card factor two enduring brands that not even General Motors could kill, namely Vauxhall and Opel, the walking dead of GM throwaways. Yes, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I ask you. A senior Stellantis dude who spoke to me on condition of anonymity in a dream where the world was perfect and everyone was honest, said, Shit sandwich? Hardly. I put it to you that there's a massive difference between two slices of buttered bread carelessly separated by a film of excrement and a layer cake exquisitely crafted from this industry's most dependably shit brands by artisans who've been doing this kind of thing for generations. A women, brother, again. Hard to argue with that. I guess it ultimately depends on the icing, of course. He added, synergies and economies of scale will flow into the product almost immediately. Under the Stellantis banner, we'll be able to offer Jeep-like levels of customer support with Citroen-style build quality, plus the commitment to cutting-edge technology typically embodied previously only in voxels. It's unlikely other car makers can match us in these areas. Stellantis will employ 400,000 sufferers. These people have obviously made poor choices in a previous life, but do they really deserve this? The new company will be headquartered in that automotive manufacturing powerhouse we call the Netherlands. Problematically, Stellantis has too many factories and thus insufficient capacity to sell all the cars they might otherwise make, mainly because people don't want them, frankly, and the company has no commercial footprint in the world's largest new car market, which would be China. Apart from that, though, it's all good. Bruno Le Maire and Stefano Patuandelli, the ministers of federal bean counting in France and Italy, respectively, issued a joint statement in which they both, quote, warmly welcome the merger, which they say will create a, quote, new European champion. <laughs> Oh, possibly no, because, Jesus, when I think about that, that's almost a death sentence right there. PSA sales were down 30% last year, yes. setting the tone early for Stellantis. And Stellantis has made all of these promises to the French government and unions about not closing plants and boning any workers. Already, I'd suggest, writing checks their bodies can't cash. To quote still-living screen god Tom Skerritt. Yes, who of course was Viper from Top Gun. 
the 1986 one. In real life, he actually served four years in the US Air Force. Most people don't know that. He's 87 now. Hashtag respect. Both halves of the Stellantis equation have massive production overcapacity, like grossly underutilised factories, which are effectively incinerators designed mainly to burn cash. And the French government is also a major shareholder, which is not like a total epic conflict of interest or anything. Understandably, Toyota, Volkswagen and Hyundai welcomed the merger. I think they were just secretly sorry that Renault and Nissan could not be included, thus unleashing the potential of the full automotive albatross. You'll probably have to look that one up. Google Samuel Taylor Coleridge for that one. Stellantis is, of course, the modern-day interpretation of the rhyme of the ancient mariner. And frankly, we've seen this one before.